Hey everybody, this is Rhino and we're back to Max the Curse of Brotherhood. So we have this level that seems like it's going to be a big chase sequence. Death by Lava 6-3 I suppose. There's only one secret. I suspect this is the final chase sequence that, to end the game. And so it may be very short. And then we'll just have to see how long the credits or anything else is. Uh, now, inherently, you have a another one of these quick time events things where you're going to die multiple times, and you've got the monster chasing after you. Hmm. And it's just going to reset over and over again. Hmm. I suppose pulling out of the drawing section and pulling back in is a mistake. This may take 30 minutes, really. You've got to cushion your blow on that first jump. You've got to get up here, then draw this. Hope that that gets you far enough. Then you got to draw this. Then you're going to draw one of these. So you can jump to this. So this is that same monster that was chasing you before, it seems like, but it doesn't, I think, really cover the lava monster we saw that one time. Hmm. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do here, I guess. But, and this is the problem is that you get, even if you make it to a checkpoint, you still don't quite know what the goal is half the time. Let's just jump here. It'd be an interesting twist here if that turned it if that turned him into a lava monster and then you were just doomed. Alright. And that there was that was an unskippable cutscene. that they showed me and so every time you fail here you're going to end up having to do this previous section before and I can't help but feel this just once again highlights him as not particularly the best choice of bad guys or the chase sequences as the best choice thematically he's just a monster and this is like the only cutscene where you can't skip which is crazy because you would definitely have more more of a want to skip that sequence than any other
went the wrong way, but at least we went we got another checkpoint. It's fairly obvious that the game is uninterested in Uh, it's uninterested in more of the chase sequences with the monster. Hmm. I've just gotten another achievement yet again. Now we're doing a whole bunch of ladder stuff, which this is probably the sequence that I would have to assume forced them into adding ladders and probably is in part the reason why they're not uh, I have to assume it is in part the reason why there aren't so many ladders anywhere else in the early part of the game is because this fairly obviously is a late game edition or late in development edition right. you're just gonna have to get that those angles fairly perfect and any mistake doesn't seem like it's going to be really allowed any little hitch any little pause any slowness to get off of a ladder or slowness to get hopefully that would be a checkpoint And that all of a sudden Felix is being given a lot more voice acting where some of those lines of dialogue could have been used previously. Uh, like the help, help me, help me, Max, all of that. We could have heard those lines of dialogue earlier in the game. Here we're having the up, up, up phrase reused. I feel like I probably missed the collectible there. Yes, it's right there at the end. Interesting. And we've got more game to go. So we're in chapter 7-1 and that took us only 8 seconds. So, I mean, eight minutes. And that was uh, just really long fade to black. And they're gonna introduce a new character extremely late in the game. That character almost certainly should have been left for a potential sequel. Um, because you could have certainly had a bird fly and then have that bird I don't feel like there's enough time there like you could have had a bird grab Felix and then that could have been two Part two of the game is that you have to continue to rescue him. I don't know if I can do this. Unless there's some other trick to this that I'm not getting. You run to this distant spot. You run here. 
you do this and then there's just not enough time to move back to draw the thing. Like, I can draw that and but I can't do anything else. So it, it feels like the branch on top might be a red herring. Okay. So let's not jump then. Let's kind of fall this way and then draw this that way. I think you have to kind of jump a little bit. Okay, I get it. That you only have enough time to do the two actions, but what you have to do is draw this, then draw this so it goes around him, and yet makes a fairly tight connection. I can't help but say, though, this is just not what I would ever like as far as a how to play a video game to just say, you failed, try again, you failed, try again, you failed, try again. Um, yeah, I didn't even jump in that case. Um, I can't help but feel like there were some teachers in school uh, in, in a lot of schools that are like that where all they do is mark things wrong on tests and then they move on to the to the next test and they never try to like educate you or or help you learn how to put the right answer um, and that's just like super frustrating. Yeah, in video game form or in school form, it's super frustrating for someone to just say, no, you're wrong, no, you're wrong, try again with no hints, no help. I don't know if vindictive is actually the right term, but certainly would be a term I would consider using. I have no idea how this would work. Like, you're gonna have to get some level of upward momentum. we're back to eyes which at this point we really shouldn't be back to eyes I, and I suspect the solution here is to now go up I also hear a sound of a bad guy Which, once again, they just, that just doesn't feel necessary to have surprise bad guys. Like, at this point, actually fighting bad guys is kind of pointless. Particularly if we can just push a branch.
And what's interesting about the that previous level is because there were no evil eyes, because it was a, just a chase sequence, it probably sh almost certainly should have been the end of the game. Um, that has a high chance of becoming the uh, one secret you just don't get. So for a lot of players out there that were actually trying to get all the secrets, there's a real screw you event happening there where they are intentionally making it so so you don't actually succeed Yeah, I have a hard time seeing the exact angle you would need to do to get this guy to blow himself up. And if he doesn't blow himself up, then how do I get past him? Or do I get him? Do I just not get past him? Am I supposed to? instead just make a branch path well, I guess you do that yeah I guess that works and then That lets you get up there. All right, now what? Do we go down and die? I guess we do whether we meant to or not. So you just let it bounce off your body Then it rolls. And then you just wait for it to be low. There we have the camera freaking out too. This is the fact that the camera freaks out so much is another example of them just being obsessed with the idea of learning physics or learning the Unity engine. And the funny thing here is that the Unity engine, as of this recording, is just very close to making itself irrelevant. So, anybody that would have learned the Unity engine while making this game, maybe got enough skill to make one more game, or maybe two, maybe three, if they were really fast. And at this point, I, I think even for a double a type title like this or indie title like this i i don't think that you couldn't just use the unreal engine and do just as well all right this this is gonna suck Hmm. All right, so what we need to do is we need to connect this at this end. And I think you probably need to be fairly accurate about this. Nope. You want this one 
to connect there. You want that one to connect there. You cut that. Then you cut that. Then you jump. <laughs> and you still have to make the jump. I kind of felt like there would be some point where we would do something like this, but obviously as a gimmick, it wasn't something that they were that enthralled with because it really feels like something that you could have would have done at the end of chapter one not way at the end of the game there we see another statue of mustachio which we should have been seeing those throughout the entire game also i still feel like that uh, I still kind of feel like this is one of those cases where I don't even know what I was going to say. Probably easiest to just draw this like that. Okay. It's weird that there was electricity to bring this down, but I guess the hydropower concept did go with that whole electricity concept. Right. One more evil eye. And I guess the idea probably here is to draw that. And we'll see if we can ride our way. No, we can't quite smoothly ride a branch. I think that also means we're gonna have to throw the branch that way and not get squashed. Then draw the branch. And there's just no telling how much more game there is there. There might be an idea, certainly, around... How many more evil eyes are there? Um, yeah, we're probably about halfway through. Blowing up the bad guys and killing them instead of maybe blowing them out and blowing them up and just n knocking them out and then having them not spawn despawn or ha knocking them out and then they w reawaken after a certain time that way there's just always going to be a consistent amount of urgency in these conflict sections And then here we have yet another screw you section where they want that element of surprise. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing there. Well, apparently the game knows what I'm supposed to be doing, so thank goodness for that. That was actually done really easily. Like that that was a really easy sequence. Which I don't think I was supposed to be able to actually jump off of that and survive, so I'm trying to climb up. I have to press A, I guess. Hurry, 
This does just feel like this is going to be the end. This is interesting. It's a green th thing that connects electricity. At what point... Or why are you introducing electricity as a gameplay mechanic so late in, in the game? That, that seems very crazy to introduce that. Also seems like there might, might have been a secret I missed. And forced cutscene just to show us where we're going because fairly obviously the game knew you wouldn't be able to figure it out. We are visually, obviously, a lot closer to getting all of those pieces than I thought. But the game, but you will just be forced to struggle to get that one secret at the end of the long chase sequence. Right. So the trick here think is to get a fairly long rope. There's another eyeball. I don't even really understand why his name is Mustachio if we're breaking eyeballs. Wouldn't it make more sense for his name to be like eyeball or the op, op, ophthalmologist or something like that. Right. Okay. Now the weird thing here is that probably would let me get to that branch. But I, at that point, have no idea what I'm supposed to do. It feels like what you're supposed to do is probably something closer to that. Alright, make a backwards S. And then make that connection there. And then... But, like, at that point, I just don't think this, this would reach. So I probably need to do just about as long of a branch as possible. This is just going to be really sucky because... Even one slight mistake here, and I'm screwed. Like, if I had not given myself enough room. I'm surprised I survived that. Alright. Alright, so we have a rope. Let's just get up to the rope first. Darn it. Alright. Rope. A little bit throwing us towards the rope. A lot of bit throwing us up here. Okay. Now. Absolute upward momentum. Felix! Hang on! I'm gonna stop him! 
Now at this point, it feels fairly obvious why they wouldn't have used the Max Help Me line multiple times in the past levels because they're using it multiple times now. You, you have like really no option. You have to go up here. And there's something here that wants to be broken. And then... Alright. Jump. You're gonna have to jump particularly far to get to that. To get to that. And all of this is just so you get close enough that you can tap the Y button madly to get that. So we are going to be about 10 e evil eyes short, I suspect, of getting them all. Which I don't think is going to probably matter too much. Again, I just don't feel like there's a good angle here. Right. Meanwhile, that's a branch. So, flinging a branch. Doesn't really do anything. Yeah, I, I don't even know like what the solution here is supposed to be. Is that a branch or is that a vine that I'm just drawing? No, that's a vine. So let's just start with that. We have a vine here. It's a tiny little vine. Maybe that gets us high enough now that we can push things back and blow them up. Yeah, I think that's the trick. Alright. And then that lets me draw a very long branch to get to the next side. We've got all the secrets, so we are at the end now. I suspect of the game, uh, if not, we're at the very least at the end of this episode. And once again, we are... ...drawing ropes to connect to something. I don't know what guess we're supposed to connect it to this. Hmm. See, that would be very odd for the game to just end going to the top here. But it would also be very odd for there to be another level at this point. That, uh, unless it's just going to be a long chase sequence. Which could be a nightmare scenario, certainly. Hmm. And the game is not going to slow time for it down for you. That That's another point to mention, certainly, is that at no point did the game explain when it was going to slow down time and when it wasn't. So... The very first time time slowed down, it was a surprise, and every time time doesn't slow down, it's a surprise. Good uh, luck. Be careful up there. Hmm. 
So we have 7-2, Mustachio. We don't even know what Mustachio wants with Felix or what he's doing with Felix. Is he doing some kind of brain transfer? To take over Felix's body? So now we have a very different type of gameplay. Notice how the game specifically told you you can't really stand still. Alright. Now we're not in danger of blowing ourselves up. And since this is just going to be a boss fight, we see there are no secrets or anything. We're just gonna, I think, struggle through that. But notice how, like, first hit and you're done. know who's talking to him. And apparently you only had to draw. Hmm. So we did checkpoint. Like this really is just not the experience we've had up until this point in the game. So it, it feels very odd. And you're just going to have to kind of have him jump around and miss you once so then you can do this. but. Yeah, I, it just does not seem like it really wants me to make it to the left. I, I don't know. Like, it doesn't look like there's anything to draw over here. So we have a major difficulty spike, a completely different type of gameplay mechanic. Um, I can't actually climb that unless I'm under it, so... Hmm. Come on. Come on, come on, work. Hmm. 
I'm just like failing very miserably to, to do this in a smooth way. And I just kind of hope that this is the end and that we aren't going to have to do multiple things. Like, I can't get higher. So are we just waiting till lightning hits? Like, what, what's the trick here? Alright, so if you run all the way this way, you'll get squashed. Like, how many times have I died now? 30, 40? I don't see a connecting point. Am I supposed to get him to lean towards the side? Am I supposed to blow up his hands? Is there no way to actually succeed? Alright, so hitting him in some way is right. But he does this initial pound. One, two, three. And then... Yeah, probably is supposed to hit that. So how many times are we supposed to do this? And did that just reset? Because this may very well be a case where... Are we making any progress like breaking the things on his head? Because I guess that's what we're probably going for here. But you're kind of running into it. How many times do we have to do this? I, I wonder if there is a third part to this I have to figure out. No, again, you're just not really getting any help at all. The game is not telling you what your overall goal is or what the next step in the overall goal would be. So, I would hope that this would be it. And he probably squashed you at that point also, but I'm glad you didn't have to do that three different times. Are you okay? Felix. Hmm. Max, you saved me. 
That's an awful, awful boss battle at the end. Just be because they really hadn't established the idea of boss battles up until this point. I can't help but assume some magic caused that to happen. There we get a your brother's keeper achievement. Uh, now what? Hmm. I'm not sure. Max, you completed what I could not. Our land is safe. Let me ease your way home. We never get an idea as far as any characterization of who this old lady is. So yeah, you're not getting a lot of explanation of anything at all. If this game was better and had been better received, I could see you making a sequel where it just continues down the same path where Felix gets kidnapped and you have to save him. They, they had to kind of be fairly careful about not making Felix too young. If Felix had been a baby, for instance, that would have been different. So he still has the magical marker. I can't help but wonder, though, if this was a DS game where you were actually drawing on the screen for this, uh, would it have played really any better? I don't think so. Some of these concept arts are pretty far from what we actually got in the game. Um, I, I kind of don't think it would, but also, if I think about it, if you were playing this on the DS, then the camera would have had to been so zoomed out that everything would have been so tiny that it didn't is odd that there's so many weird Dutch angle cameras shots in the first half of the game in particular um, and oddly kind of not any Dutch angle shots later on in the game but a lot of zooming in and zooming out uh, it definitely feels like they were playing around with the camera uh, at the beginning of the game with Dutch angle tilted camera shots and then they started playing with zoom, zooming in and zooming out. There's definitely a concept here that given a second pass might have been interesting. You At some point obviously they wanted you to fight a dragon. They even showed you that big flying creature and did, didn't, didn't do anything with it and th they at some point wanted you to be in a kind of floating castle environment looking at some of this concept art credits went by very quickly there obviously not that many people worked on this game so let's see if i was to hit achievements that's just going to pop up the Steam overlay, uh, which I don't know why it's actually recording any of that. We could see for a game that is so built around achievements. Reach the old lady in under five minutes. Uh, you... 
I can't read that. It says you got your back, your kid brother back like a boss. Complete a level without dying. That's probably pretty impossible. Did complete one area with two earth pillars, three drawings. Um, fully assemble the amulet. Defeat Mustachio without dying even once. Okay, that that means this. Trying to get all the achievements for Steam. When since Steam only highlights if you get all the achievements, is impossible here. Um, now, when you're in this overlay, can you actually see overall global achievement stats? I guess you can. I don't use this overlay screen, and I have no idea if it's not showing something important. But yeah. The Brothers Keeper achievement would indicate what percentage of people on Steam that actually beat the game. And that would be 31%, 31.6% of players. So, over two-thirds of the players of this game didn't even bother to make it to the end. Which, that's not super surprising. It is usually closer to about half as far as players not willing to get all the achievements uh, but then when we get down to the lowest ones uh, you didn't die in death by lava only 4.2 percent of players ever got that done you defeated mustachio without dying even once only 4.7 percent of players got that done so i guess this is probably a case where you only have to defeat Mustachio you don't have to play the entire game without dying but you do have to play the immune to lava uh, death by lava level without dying for that achievement which does just highlight that it's just not going to happen meanwhile it doesn't seem at all like there is any real reason to get the evil eyes it doesn't feel like anything will unlock from that at all um, unless it made it easier to defeat mustachio but I don't know how it could have been much e easier since I had been sequenced out like that and the fact that we only have 10 evil eyes is is really not helpful because it's 10 evil eyes that are in the middle of levels this is mustachio's dungeon is the one where i really screwed up um certainly and i'm surprised there's seven chapters here because really it should this first chapter gives you the feeling that you're going to have four fairly long levels in each chapter and then you kind of don't have that uh, you get down to three in chapter three, and they aren't that long. Chapter four literally only has two, and that was the wetlands area that they totally messed up with and didn't use, didn't do anything great with. And see, if I was to click Mustachio's Dungeon here, it is just going to start you at the beginning. So you would have to play the whole level all over again. So no thanks to that. So, yeah, I would say Max Curse of the Brotherhood suffers pretty horribly in the sense that it is just not really game tested very well. Uh, if it honestly is supposed to be a kid's game, it's too hard. If it's supposed to be an adult's game, it's probably a little too easy. Or a little too short it definitely is too light on characterization either way it's too light on having a goal of story and narrative um, if it is supposed to have been a kids game then 
there's many many other problems with it besides just the difficulty uh, so I, I don't know what they were really trying to target here and I feel like I had a lot more to complain about about this game that I probably have already complained about but it, it's all just slipping my mind uh, yeah generally speaking I think what you would have my, my suggestion on this would have been to put more time put more effort and put more skilled programmers on it stop don't play around with the game physics if they're not fully polished and uh, just remove some of the game physics don't play with the camera and do weird Dutch angles that's always a almost always a bad idea in games maybe some game out there has done it fa fairly well uh, don't play around with zooming in and zooming out so much uh, separate the game out into two separate games frankly because you have slow methodical puzzle platforming at the beginning of the game and then near the two-thirds of the way mark the game abandons most of the slow methodical puzzle platforming for high action sequences that are either conflict sequences against the bad guys who are almost all in the back third of the game or they are chase sequences um, which there are chase sequences throughout the game none of them are particularly good though because they they are just once again interrupting this slow methodical puzzle platforming content so you're trying to serve two different types of masters there having two very different type of gamers uh, potentially liking some part of this game liking half of the game and then not liking the other half of the game uh, so it, it just kind of doesn't work uh, certainly this probably is a game that had they put twice the budget in it twice the amount of time in it it still probably wouldn't have been that good or that sold that well so they they may have made the right decision to put it out as is um, inherently that this concept of a game maybe only really does work in very small doses and at a discounted price um, what's funny is you have something like Alice uh, the American McGee's Alice Alice Madness Returns those two games and those are kind of precision platforming with some fighting and some action sequences and one of the things that I think makes that really succeed in a game like this not succeed is that they put a interesting bizarre story in the American McGee's Alice around some very benign generic gameplay mechanics you really can't have a benign generic story and benign generic gameplay mechanics um, otherwise you end up with Max the Curse of Brotherhood which uh, just does not really work for me and I don't think it works for very many people as a game uh, storyline wise certainly I don't think it works for very many people the other suggestion that I made before and I still stick with it is that if you are going to have precision platforming as your main thing and instead of puzzle platforming then you probably should adopt some of the the touchstones cultural touchstones of Super Mario Brothers and there probably should have been a chapter one if we look at this uh, again ignoring the prologue there probably should have been one two three levels and then we should have been in a castle uh, something that would have looked like a Super Mario Brothers castle where it looks like would look like we might actually save Felix fairly early and then you could have had that bird snatch Felix away and carry him away each time um, this crossing level where it starts in a city uh, a kind of western town would have been a decent setting for more of a castle like experience but 
that's not really what the crossing is because you barely spend two or three puzzle sequences in the city and then you're back into the forest and then there could have been three sections here and then another castle which could have been more of a stone ancient ruins castle um, for chapter two and then you could have had three levels here and since this is mostly the dark forest with those lightning bugs which I forgot the lightning bugs even existed they were incredibly irritated and irritating and then immediately dropped which also probably indicates that most of these chapters were developed by separate teams possibly across the whole planet uh, just working together in parallel or not really working together at all but yeah there could have been a dark castle that played with light and shadow a lot more of course that concept of light and darkness completely forgotten uh, by the time you're at chapter four and then chapter four is supposed to be a water level and water levels and video games tend to suck but this one in particular sucks because there's just nothing there they couldn't even get a third level and if you were going to make a castle around this it would be kind of a flooded type castle and then the warm caves which honestly you should just merge chapter four and chapter five together would have been ideally three levels and then a lava castle and then mustachio's dungeon three levels and then probably just the end of the game um, because there really are only two levels here the tower getting up to the tower and then fighting mustachio and i definitely would have suggest thought about just cutting this final boss fight they probably spent way too much time programming a boss fight like that when it just was, wouldn't have been necessary at all it's odd here that you don't have an option to go back and look at cutscenes so if you wanted to see the cutscenes or even the uh, credits you would just have to play the game over again but otherwise I don't think I have much other uh, much of anything else to say this is not really a game I'd recommend people playing um, it's not awful but standards hopefully are going up as far as video games and it doesn't quite meet the, the level of standards in 2022 to be considered a good game um, if you wanted something like this I would probably say try American McGee's Alice Madness Returns or the original Alice game if you could or Super Mario Brothers or any of its sequels or um, I don't, there's probably several other types of precision platformers if you want precision platformers like Super Meat Boy or Celeste um, or if you want puzzle platformers maybe you play something like Portal which has a better story I, I mean that's a probably unfair comparison to say play Portal instead but play Portal instead for sure um, as far as actual just puzzle platforming something that is consistently puzzle platforming with no action no conflict no chase sequences I don't have a game that comes directly to mind um, but I'm sure there's something closer to that uh, and yeah I am definitely in danger of just repeating myself if I go any further so let's just wrap up this series uh, on my YouTube page I will mention I have a playlist for every game I've ever covered so I've already covered Portal Portal 2 go check out those playlists that would be my suggestion it's a, it's a good default suggestion in general since I and those are some of my favorite games um, and otherwise if you want to um, like share subscribe click the notification bell on YouTube all of that is very helpful and then if you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites to 
have backup notifications when you inevitably don't get them directly from YouTube. There's a bunch of links down below. Also, there's a link to Patreon if you want to support me further, which I would greatly appreciate. Or you could friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wish list or a gift card. That would also be very helpful. Always, It's always nice to be able to buy some new games and, and play something new. Uh, that's it for this recording and this series. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good evening.